Contradictions of Heterosexuality and Masculinity. Okay, so uh, the first contradiction that I found uh, with heterosexuality and masculinity is a lot of straight guys will say that I, I, I'm straight, I like women, they're, they're feminine, I like that. But we know from chapter 3 and from common experience that gay men do tend to be more on the effeminate side. So the question is, why is it that straight men then don't like gay men? Because if they're effeminate, they should like them. I mean, even if we ignore this whole Guerrero thing and we ignore that masculine men can be attracted to other masculine men, why are men who say they're attracted to feminine women, why are they not attracted to feminine men? Uh, we, had, we had a different system in the ancient world uh, whereby sexuality was more about domination and submission. So in the ancient world, in Rome, for example, a man could have sex with a woman and a man could have sex with another man as long as the, the free Roman citizen was the top or the dominant position. You had a similar thing in, in North America called the Burdashes. They basically were, they were, they were almost basically transgendered. They weren't even gay. They were just so far, they were so effeminate that they were, they would be considered transgender today. But if a man had sex with, with, with a, a Burdash, they, what would happen is he would still be considered a male and the Burdash would be basically in a very female position and would be looked upon as basically like a woman. Uh, in most tribes, this position was, was actually a good thing. It wasn't a bad thing. But nonetheless, I, I do find it interesting how straight men say, ooh, I'm attracted to feminine, but you say, well, gay men are kind of feminine. Uh, why aren't you attracted to them? And then they go, you know, berserk on that one. So that's always been a contradiction that I've, I thought was very interesting. The second one is, that I, I wrote in Guerrero somewhere that when around the time uh, you know you hit puberty and you're you're a male, you're get, you're given a metaphorical list of how to be a man, you know. So you're supposed to like sports. You're supposed to um, you're supposed to like those sort of masculine things. And I mean, sure, a lot of it is cultural, but most well a lot of gender or at least the core part of gender um, is not cultural it is innate uh, and and because it's innate it's it, it's interesting number one that you have to be given a list uh, and the fact that a lot of it is prescriptive and you're told what to do that shows the cultural influence but what's what's very interesting is that the last thing on that list is for a, a man to be masculine, you're supposed to be attracted only to people who don't share with you anything common on that list. So if you're masculine, women are not supposed to like those masculine things, but those are the only people you're supposed to like. You know, so if you're, so if you as a man, let's, let's just use a silly example. If you as a man, you like glitter, you know, then you're a fag. But if you don't like those people who like glitter, i.e. women, you're also a fag. So that's, that, that to me has been interesting that if, if you like mas if you are masculine and you like masculine, that's wrong. If you are masculine, you must like what is not masculine, except in the activities and all that stuff. But to whom you're attracted to, that must be feminine. That must be the opposite. And, and that to me has all, that, that, that has always, uh, struck me as sort of odd because for me it's always been you know I want somebody who is on my level you know we share common interests and well if there's sex involved you know what's the problem you know so anyways that's that's the short little ditty I, uh, I wanted to spew out here and if you have any questions let me know on the forum or in the comments below thank you